Good evening, and welcome to our next installment in the awards and recognition program for our high school students at DeLott. In the past, we had what we called our major awards, and those were in the areas of fine arts, leadership, sports, etc. But instead, the awards committee this last year decided to make a change. And we're in something, a new concept, a new idea that we're excited about. And it's what we're calling our flagship exemplars. The flagship exemplars are actually not an award, but instead a recognition of a student who's exemplary in the one areas of our four flagships, discipleship, citizenship, relationship, and scholarship. Each flagship exemplar is selected in a different way. The discipleship exemplar is chosen by the staff at DeLott. The relationship exemplar is chosen by the recipient's own classmates. The citizenship exemplar is chosen by the service learning team. And the scholarship exemplar is cho chosen by the awards committee. Each recipient of a flagship exemplar is given the opportunity to speak to their classmates, the high school, and to the DeLott community with a speech. Tonight, we will have speeches from the recipients of the relationship and citizenship exemplars. Tomorrow night, during the commencement program, we will hear speeches from the recipients of the discipleship and scholarship exemplars. After we've recognized our exemplar students, we will end the evening with awarding our highest form of recognition, the at DeLott, the Eagle All-Around Award. I will be back later to give that award. For now, we will begin with the citizenship exemplar. What's up, DeLott? This is Mr. Bo, and I have the honor and privilege to present this year's representative of the Citizenship Exemplar. The Citizenship Exemplar is about a lot of things. It's about service, truth, integrity. It's about honoring God's creation. It's about using technology wisely. We know that there are a lot of DeLott students showing these characteristics, and that choosing a representative for this exemplar is a difficult job. And we have selected a student that represents all of you well. So I am happy to announce this year's representative as DeLotte's citizenship exemplar. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Doing good, how are you? Awesome, I'm glad you're able to uh, jump into this. So, you know, good morning, Corinne, and I'm calling you this morning to say congratulations. And you have been selected as DeLotte's Citizen Exemplar Representative for the 2019-2020 school year. Aw, yay! Yeah! <laughs> Jesus has two commands that seem really contradictory to the entirety of the human race's history and are probably some of the most difficult commands in all of Scripture. Love your enemies and do unto others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend from those whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Luke 6, 32, 36. When I was first asked to be a representative for the citizenship exemplar, I'll be honest, I was honored, but I was also a little reluctant. I was already feeling the pressure and build up from the end of the year, and this felt like just another thing I would have to do. But then I started actually thinking about what God might want to say through this. And I became more rested in the process and at peace, thinking of this not as a burden, but as a gift I've been given to honor God. So over the MCO, I've been able to watch a lot of YouTube videos. And among those, I got to watch an amazing documentary called Iraq, A Forgotten Hope. This documentary centered around really incredible people working and loving people in a war-torn Iraq. And as I watched, this phrase came up, preemptive love. 
It was from a TED Ed clip of this guy named Jeremy Cortner, who ran an organization of the same name that specializes in humanitarian activities in Iraq with an emphasis on stopping violence through healing relationships between historically opposed groups. Preemptive love. That phrase really just struck me and I held onto it as I continued watching. The document showcased too a lady who created a program to help teach English to girls rescued from ISIS slavery, and a man who founded Free Burma Rangers, which is an organization that goes into war-torn places to rescue civilians impacted by violence and to teach them skills to rescue and care for others. He had even brought his wife and children with him to these sometimes inhospitable and dangerous places, all for the sake of strangers that he had chosen to love. All the while, I could only think about was how they exemplified this idea of showing love in such a powerful way. These people were fighting for justice, truth, healing, and hope, all the effects of loving others first, like how Jesus so loved for us on the cross while we were still sinners. This is preemptive love. Mulling over this, I tried to think of this concept in my own life, because really, preemptive love is the same as loving your enemies and the pinnacle of treating others the way you want to be treated. Now, I don't live in a war zone. I don't have actual enemies that shoot at me with real bullets or wish to kill me like the people in Iraq do. Yet, I'm still called by God to love my enemies to love those who do not love me first and treat them how I would like to be treated. To reach out for those I can touch and care for in my small vicinity and show those little actions of love. Saying hi first, smiling to greet others first, asking someone how they're feeling first, forgiving and asking for forgiveness when wrong has been done first. Showing genuine, honest care for others and all that I do. I'd like to encourage you as we step out into this weird world plagued by malice and violence, sickness, grudges, and worst of all, hate, that we may not be down in a trench, but we are in a battle. I hope that we can make the difficult decisions as we may not live in a war zone, but we are in a war. God has called us to strike first with compassion and empathy and to free those who are not only burdened under the weight of injustice, but are who are guilty of injustice. This coronavirus has shaken our lives, but that is no excuse to stop loving who you can and finding ways to give love to others first, always remembering to live lives of integrity and honesty. God has given us the command because this is the key to creating a better world and to live authentically through love. Whether we're alone or with our friends or online, living authentically through love is the way. We are the tools for change and no matter the circumstance, God can use you to touch your peers, your teachers, your friends, your family, your school, your job, your country, your nation, and yes, even your enemies. Show mercy, like how you want to be shown mercy. And if nothing else, please love first, just like Christ loved you first. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16. Thank you. Every year, a special award is given to the senior who best exemplifies what it means to build respectful and caring relationships with sympathy and humility. This is a person who knows how to engage others through active listening, through thoughtful consideration of other points of view, and through their flexibility and understanding towards others. Senior class members and advisors select one of their own who they believe best demonstrates these relationship qualities and characteristics. This year's Relationship Exemplar Award recipient consistently demonstrates these attributes with a Christ-like love and devotion to everyone she encounters. She's excelled in building both relationships with people of all ages and cultural backgrounds, both within and outside the Delot community. 
Most importantly, she demonstrates what it means to have an intimate and personal relationship with her Savior and Lord. She has had a profound impact on the Delac community, not just for what she has done, but more importantly, for the Christ-like character that she exhibits. All of us have been blessed by her friendly and outgoing nature. To many, she has been a sympathetic ear, a close confidant, and a trusted and devoted friend. To others, she has been a caring sister. To my wife and I, she has become a dearly loved daughter. I consider a great honor and privilege to introduce to you tonight this year's Relationship Exemplar Award recipient, Ms. Dael Kim. Okay, that seems better. All right, so um, just to start this really short interview, um, Dial, I wanted to say that as your class sponsor, it's been an immense pleasure working with you this year, um, XCOM. It's been so fantastic. And we're really proud of all of the commitment that you've put into your class and how hard you've worked. Um, so as you know, each year, Delot chooses one student to represent each school exemplar. And your senior class and your sponsors are so excited that you have been chosen as the relationship <laughs> exemplar to represent the school this year. So oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> what? So your dorm parents can feel free to step in and congratulate you and give you a hug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you know this means you need to speak at commencement <laughs> so um, <laughs> congratulations we're, we're really excited that we're really excited that you've been selected and um, this basically this comes from your whole class and from your sponsors and just really happy that you can represent the school this way so Thank you so much. Before I start my speech, I would like to thank my teachers, the class of 2020, and the Deloitte community for honoring me by choosing me for the relationship exemplar. I want everyone to close your eyes and imagine something. Go back to your very first day at Deloitte or the very first week where everything is new to you. You don't know where the classrooms are, you don't know where to sit during lunch, and there are so many things that you have to get used to. You may open your eyes now. August of 2014, my seventh grade year, was my first year at Delot. My previous school had been such a small school. I never had more than 10 people in my grade, and by sixth grade, I was the only one. So you can imagine that coming to Delot was a big change for me. On the first day of school, not knowing where my locker was, I wandered around in the halls. I probably stood around for about five minutes, not knowing where to go. Right then, a student found me struggling and led me to the bulletin board where the locker list was hung up. Lunchtime came and I realized that when one person leaves, everyone else leaves the table together. Everyone started standing up one by one but since I hadn't finished my meal yet, I quietly moved my spoon into my mouth, trying to finish it as fast as I could. That moment, two girls sat back down and waited for me until I was all done and walked back with me. Not being used to the curriculum, I struggled with doing my homework. I was new and shy, so I had trouble reaching out first to ask questions. A girl from a different dorm suggested that we work together so we sat on the outdoor court bleachers and did our homework together. Soon after, I was invited to a hangout at a trampoline park where the entrance fee was much more expensive than I had expected. At the time, it was more than my monthly allowance, so I had to say, sorry, I can't go. Right then, someone offered to pay for me. I refused, but he didn't mind. That day was one of my best memories in middle school. I'm so thankful for all these people and those will be the things that I will remember forever. They were my lollipop moments. The term lollipop moment was introduced from a TED talk by Drew Dudley, 
and he spoke about how he had unknowingly changed two strangers' lives by using a single lollipop. He defined it as a moment when someone said or did something that you feel made your life fundamentally better, or when something that you said and did made someone else feel fundamentally better. My classmates did not have to help me out. They could have just ignored it, but they took their time to reach out to me by doing a simple action. The action was small, but the impact it had on me was big. One thing that I noticed about Delot students is that once there's a new kid coming, the whole grade will know, and after a while, the whole school will probably know. And not to be creepy, but that's one thing that I appreciate and will miss about Delot. People care and they show intentionality, just like what my classmates did when I first came to Delot. I know that everyone's experiences are different, but I'm pretty sure that you felt someone being intentional with you at least once. That is such a great feeling, to know that someone is willing to take their time to get to know you, or maybe even help you out. Even though this pandemic was not the ending we expected for our school year, I think the situation has taught us many things, including how to be intentional with our friends. We were stuck in our homes and couldn't meet each other for about two months. During that, we had to find ways to connect with them, and I think if we could take one thing out of this quarantine, it's that we've learned a lesson on how to carry on forward, not to take face-to-face -face interactions for granted, and to be intentional. When we leave Delot and start a new life somewhere else, whether that's college, work, or a gap year, it'll be a bigger world with a lot of opportunities and so many new people. Most of us will be going to a college or a university, and there will be many people who will be in the same place as you. They will have the same questions, the same feelings, and the same start as you. So take the risk and don't miss the opportunity. When you're at your university orientation, go find someone and talk to them first. When you enter your massive university lecture hall, Sit next to that person that's alone, say hello, and build a bridge. When you go to lunch, invite them to come eat with you. Use intentionality as a tool. As cliche as it might sound, intentionality opens up doors to new friendships. You might wonder, what if they're not my friend type? What if they're the complete opposite from me? But the reality is, you will never know unless you try. If you don't step forward, you're always in the same place. In the end, even if you don't end up being friends, that moment you spent with them might be a special memory that encouraged them in a time of need. That person who sat next to you might continue to be a complete stranger or become your best friend depending on what you decide to do in that moment. Remember, the choice is yours whether to let it pass as one of the random moments in your life or to make it a significant lollipop moment, either for you, the other person, or both. It might be harder for some of you to reach out. It might not be convenient, but for some, it might be easy. Just don't let your comfort zone have control over your decisions. Don't be scared. On the inside, we're all humans after all. Take some time in your day and use it for another person. Spend time with them and develop friendships. Sometimes it's okay to prioritize relationships over academics. One thing I learned is that in the end, you won't remember the grade you got for that test, but you'll remember who you studied with. You'll remember the people and the memories who you shared special moments with. As John C. Maxwell said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. And so I want to challenge you guys with one thing. After we step out of this place as an alumni, it's okay if you forget about the speech that I'm giving right now. 
But I just want you to remember one thing, and that is to be intentional with the people you meet and the relationships you make, because that's what will shape and change your future. Thank you. It's my honor each year to award the, what we call the Eagle All-Around Award. I'm going to do that again tonight, um, but uh, I'll be up front with you that I'm going to need to read it because part of what we do uh, in recognizing this student is that we get quotes from uh, many of our staff. And so let me read uh, the Eagle All-Around Award and uh, then present it. The Eagle All-Around Award is the final major award presented by Delauder International School. The winner of this award must meet the following criteria to be considered for selection. They must have a positive impact on the school in multiple ways. They must excel in three of the four major award areas. They must have shown leadership in the school and they must show outstanding personal character. The decision of who receives the award is decided by the awards committee and is a difficult one each year. As stated earlier, the winner of this award must excel in at least three of the four major award areas. Our recipient tonight actually excelled in five areas of school life. In the area of fine arts, she was part of the drama and the show choir. In the area of athletics, she was on the girls rugby team and was the captain of the girls volleyball team and was voted the MVP. In the area of leadership, she was part of the spiritual leadership class and served on the senior XCOM. In the area of service, she has gone on multiple impact trips, was involved in uh, service throughout the year, and was the service coordinator for the senior class. And finally, academically, she achieved summa cum laude with a GPA of 4.08 and has been the recipient of three course awards during her time at DeLotte. Traditionally, I have asked staff to help me describe the student who will be receiving the award and hear some of the statements made about this year's winner. I cannot think of anyone else in this year's senior class more deserving of the Eagle all around. She is dedicated, but never overcommitted, kind, but always genuine, adventurous, but always gracious. She consistently takes the posture of a learner and humble servant, making her not only the most experienced a lot impact trip participant, but also a model for what an impact participant looks like. Another staff person said, I had the privilege of teaching her as well as coaching her in forensics. Although my class wasn't her passion, she was very teachable and eager to learn. With forensics, I did get to experience her doing something she loved and she spent countless hours working to perfect her acts. She took criticism well and was a joy to work with and bounce creative ideas off from as she took the ideas, added her own twist and wouldn't rest until it was perfect. She is humble, determined, and talented. Another staff person said, she is a peacemaker, a steadfast friend, a dedicated student, and a faithful servant. She gives freely of her time to others. She works hard to maintain her grades. Above all else, she loves Jesus wholeheartedly, and it shows in every aspect of her life. Another quote. I'm very appreciative of how much she loves challenges, debate, and questioning stuff. It comes from an honest desire to understand the world, not some misguided attempt to be combative or score points. She doesn't want to argue. She wants to discuss, which is, very admirable, which is a very admirable quality. Another quote. She's been a great asset on our senior XCOM team this year. She's good at both poking holes in the flimsy ideas and finding solutions to problems and then implementing them. She is someone who does something because it needs doing, steps in readily, and serves regardless of whether there's any glory or recognition in it. Another quote. The thing that impresses me the most about her is that she is truly herself. She knows who she is and is able to live freely, grounded in her most important identities. She makes people feel like they can be themselves because she is so truly herself, with no pretense. I've really enjoyed seeing her grow into this, into this confidence and openness. And finally, she truly exemplifies the nature of all around. 
She not only excelled in academics, but managed to be an excellent volleyball player, a leader in speech and forensics, drama and vocal and instrument music. She is a renaissance leader. But for me, her greatest contribution to Lot was her ability to lead by example, with humility and great faith. It is my honor to award the 2020 Eagle All-Around Award to Elizabeth Horton. Hello. Hello, Elizabeth. How are you? I'm doing good. Yes. Are you a little surprised to be talking to me in Zoom? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I figured that. Yeah. So. Well, listen, I get the honor every year <clears throat> to uh, award what's called the Eagle All Around. I know you know that. Um, this year is a little bit different, so we're doing it via Zoom, but I just wanted to let you know that you are the recipient of the Eagle All Around Award this year as chosen by the awards committee. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, <laughs> on, um, <laughs> on Thursday night, uh, I'll award it to you uh, via video. Um, and actually, this will also be a part of the evening as well. So uh, <laughs> I'll be including this okay. as part of the award ceremony. But anyways, I just want to congratulate you. Thank you for um, being a student that would get involved in service, sports, academics, the spiritual side uh, of campus. and. Uh, been it hasn't been the year that I know that we wanted and that you wanted but uh, anyways all that to say congratulations uh, at the Eagle All Around Award Aww. this year. Thank you so much. Yeah all right I'm gonna let you go back to having dinner with your family and friends. <laughs> okay thank right. you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. Well, that ends our evening uh, of awards and recognition for our DeLotte High School students. I want to thank you for being a part of our worldwide audience for this somewhat historic and unique event. Tomorrow night, we conclude our school year with our graduation ceremony, which starts at 7 o'clock Malaysia time, and we would love to have you join us for that as well. For now, all the best to you and your family, and good night.